<laughs> You're listening to episode 185 of the Graveyard Shift. How are you, gents? Are we sure it's 185? We're good. Is looking Wait. concerned as if it's not this episode, but it is. Is it because we've had issues? We've always had issues. <laughs> the yeah, issues we, were the- here long before lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, I said 184 for for the last two episodes, um, oh, and sorry, Alan okay. corrected me that one of them was 83. Yeah, and then I put in that little uh, that really that, that that little insert that didn't sound sound exactly like you. Everyone That's loved slick it. No bit one of editing. 83. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, because I'm recording here, yeah, yeah. Every time you tell me that I'm frozen, I'm not frozen here. <laughs> and so there's this incredible moment in the edit where you guys are like you're frozen you're frozen and i'm like what what i'm not frozen. i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> i'm totally fine my soul cold. my soul may be frozen but my stop we did watch we watched the isle of dogs <laughs> the other night. i love isle of dogs um oh uh, i hadn't seen it so, so good. sat down watched it awesome so good so really good. really enjoyed it agreed um but I, I got to say, what, watching movies now with Andrew, it, it's become this thing where he does this thing, like, uh, uh, in these emotional moments, he's like, are you crying, Dad? Oh. I'm like, okay, just now, you know. That's what I'm Christina like, does to me during MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, MasterChef I'm a, Australia. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. sorry. Yeah. As, as, far as, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, no. saying no. MasterChef... Australia is almost redundant because for me it is yeah. the definitive master yeah. chef. The US one's yeah. Pants. pants. Yeah, we started re-watching them recently. They're that good. Like it's mm. yeah, it's it, it's good TV. Yeah. It helps us on Prime as well. Yes. Easily it accessible. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I watched uh what is the the new Pixar one? Well, newish Pixar one, Outward is it called? Onward. Oh, I hear that's uh, good. Christina Onward. and I are, are we're waiting on that to come out on uh um Disney Plus. Yeah. So we watched it and we had, I kid you not, we had to push pause for my family to come for me. <laughs> I was inconsolable. Inconsolable. Are you for real? Yeah. So I didn't th- catch most of that except for the unconsolable. I'm like, oh no. So like at one point I was crying. It was, you know, Pixar. They're good at that kind of stuff. But at another point I was beyond. I was, oh. I was gone. And so they, they pushed pause. Someone else pushed pause because I wasn't able for it. And, and they all gathered, <laughs> everyone gathered around me. <laughs> oh, no. There's a deliverance session going on in the from house. No, family. not oh, deliverance. Like, Care, empathy, oh, kindness. I get, yeah, I get it. That's oh, like man. me and a couple of friends around you at a niche in 2006. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Wait, I'm spotting a pattern here. Uh, all right, Zuzo, do you want to lead us into our topic? I thought this was our topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Film critique in lockdown. No, I mean, yeah. I think that, I mean, one of the things that I was chatting with you guys about on, on the, uh, the WhatsApp is, is it the WhatsApp or WhatsApp? The WhatsApp? Uh, it's a question. Deal with it, Breen. Okay. Okay. You're supposed okay. To, this, guy, this guy's job is to hear, is to like, is to absorb questions and to connect. He's like, what? No, I just asked the questions. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, now nah, you're good at anywho. Uh, I what's up? Just basically about you know, we it's not about what we're doing now because that bores everybody, right? But like, what, did, like, how did we get here? Like, like, I'll be curious to find out from each one of you guys, and I'm sure the listeners would be curious to find out how I did, but how we actually <laughs> came to uh, you know, be people who pursued ordination in both your accounts or people who've chosen not to pursue or nation or my account or just mm-hmm. in general and well, how we went from secondary school and why we went into youth ministry which is the case for most of us mm-hmm. uh so i just kind of was curious about how you guys got to where you're at and why um mm-hmm. so who wants to go first <laughs> alan you're pointing the- right out the wall to me yeah oh exactly. no <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scott's, he, Scott's over there he, he, <laughs> alan alan is here Alan is here. And Scott's Greg, here. Greg, Greg, Scott. Yeah. How, are you, how are you? How have you gotten it so wrong, Al? 
<laughs> oh, that's a that's a, that's a great uh, start, actually. Uh, that was the he, question that was asked of me when I said I was going to become a Church of Ireland rector. Um, <laughs> Greg, can you um, can you just cut down that? How have you gotten things so wrong, Alan, and turn it into a hockey, just so that we can just I don't even have to say it anymore. I can just hit the button. Uh, actually, someone said to me after you know that kind uh, of crash sequence of the cow mooing and the, and uh -huh. screaming and all the glass. Yeah, you know, I think after someone said, "Is there a hot button that we can that your listeners can push?" Whenever uh, they want to, when we're doing the graveyard shift, I'm like, oh, that'd be a great idea. Yes. That's a, like, that's a good call. Like a modern day gong show. <laughs> well, I mean, as long as that, we might as well, uh, too old. It's not too old. It's not too old. No. Um, too I'm happy old. to go first if you want. Oh, Alan was ready, but okay. <laughs> well, he, kept, he kept pointing in the wrong direction. I didn't know what was going on with him. So, Al. I am happy for you to no, go first. I, I, we'll, no, we'll go, go for Scott. We'll, we'll go with Scott. But we, so everybody, get out your maps. Find Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> Abhi, everyone, everyone, is there anyone ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. Scott. Oh. No, but, Around but, the world in eighty days. <laughs> no, but, uh, so Scott, hi, welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, no, My pleasure. I'm really glad to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Are you, Scott? <laughs> Seriously, how old were you when you thought that you wanted to go into like full time or even ministry of any sort? Did you have like, was there a moment in life where you were like, yeah, you know what? I think this is something I want to pursue. Yeah. The, the kind of turning point moment for me was driving back from a wedding, um, a DEC wedding, actually, Alan, back in the day when you were there. And uh, so this would have been in 2001. Does that sound, does that sound for Ducks Encountering Christ? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, we were, I was driving back from a wedding and I was praying about what I was going to do with my future because um, I had to submit my, I, my paperwork to take my place in college to start studying marketing in DIT at Dublin Institute of Technology. And the plan at that time was like, I'd always been interested in like, it's the area my dad worked in. I was always reasonably good at like kind of, communicating and selling and stuff like that i liked the idea of business i'd started a couple mostly charity initiatives when i was in school but like this kind of felt like a could be a good vibe for me and what were the charity I mean, initiatives in school i started a charity with my friends called coppers for kosovo which was like a um uh, in fourth year and it was just uh it was just us picking up spare change from students to see how much we could like to, um uh, to see if they would support um uh uh people in like children in Kosovo um, and wow. uh, where there were, there were several charities partnering During to serve war. people in Kosovo, in Kosovo at the time. Yeah. Uh, wow. Just after. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. And um, so our, and our chaplain was quite involved there um, uh, in that. So, um, so we just went around with a bucket, like, and then it got to the point where the bucket got so heavy that we had to like wheel it around on a trolley and we were like, um, <laughs> That's uh, cool. yeah, so we did that. And then we also um, were looking at trying to get clothing, um, for uh, kids in orphanage in, in orphanages in Romania, and so we d started doing this clothing drive. But I actually, at the back in the day, um, my family had a caravan in our um, in our garden. It was like a playhouse kind of thing, and then you could jump off it onto the trampoline. But Ooh. we actually filled the whole caravan with clothes um, that were given to us wow. um, uh, from by people in New Park. Um, so, so how how old have you been? Uh, 16 for the first, 16 for Coppers for Costco and 18 for um, the uh, Romania Club Appeal. So, yeah. so typically teenagers wouldn't be into that kind of thing. What, why do you think you were into it? Um, definitely church stuff. Like where, 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 where I was, I was involved, like being involved in a faith community where people, where there was like regular conversation about what we could do for others definitely was part of what got me thinking. And then also like growing up overseas and having parents who were in, like, particularly my dad being involved in a business that was serving the poor um, and helping them break the poverty cycle. Yeah. Like definitely had a big impact on them, uh, on my instincts, I'd say like, so uh, maybe other people would have come to it, honestly, <laughs> if you know what I mean? Like yeah. in that they, they, they would have, they, uh, they, they might've said like off the bat, Oh, here's something that we could do for other people. I was probably kind of almost like trained into it. Like, you know, I was, I had been, um, uh, raised to to see that so i don't know if if, uh, if i'd grown up as a different kind of kid in a different part of the world or without that um if i if i would ever come to that you grew up as... in 
<laughs> I'm trying not to say the B word because I know you guys will make fun of me. Um, no. Yeah, no, I grew. Uh, so I grew up in Bangladesh. Moved there when I was seven. Came home when I was fifteen. Um, yeah. So you carry. You thought you, you think you carried some of that understanding of a greater world and greater needs beyond yourself into back to Ireland when you came. Yeah, I think I think we I think all three of us kids did like and uh, all of our work and career and studies have at least in some way been been um, shaped by that. Yeah. So then it, it, that bridged into, sorry, Alan, if you have questions, jump in. But that bridged into no, into now into youth work or like because like there's doing that in school, there's mm -hmm. studying business, mm -hmm. and then there's choosing to all of a sudden like scrap making a living out of what you do and pursue making not making a living at what you do <laughs> almost deliberately trying not to make yeah. money yeah um, <clears throat> um well i was actually driving home from a i was so i was driving home from this wedding and i was praying about what i should do and i felt like god spoke and that hasn't How? happened to me a lot uh i felt like god asked me a question and it was either how do i describe it it was either a voice of the voice of God that came into my head and that was him, or it could have been a question that was inspired like within myself. I didn't hear an audible thing where it like shouted over the car, but the question, but the question was also undeniable. I felt and it needed to be answered. I still, I like, I mean, it's so I'm not one of those people who's like, if the Lord didn't say this, then I, like my whole life will fall apart. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I also, I also think that the spirit moves in our hearts and asks us questions ourselves, or like, um, we also should be trusting our hearts and what's happening within them, particularly when it comes to connecting with our deepest passions and our sense of, of self and um, who and what we're supposed to be in the world. But I, um, what was the question? The question was, do you want to serve me full time or part time? Because you'll always do ministry. Did you ask for um, a third option? <laughs> <laughs> i said i'm gonna need a base salary um so i uh, i found a leaflet for my bible for the irish bible institute in the glove compartment in my car when i was on my way home and um walked into my parents and said um i feel like god is calling me to go to bible college and my dad says before you make this decision i've got two things to tell you he said you know i'm not you your father <laughs> <laughs> oh wait We're no not back to That's bangladesh <laughs> <laughs> Bangladesh. <laughs> um, the uh, the thing my dad said was, um, I've got two things to tell you. Uh, the first is, you know that if you go into youth ministry, you'll be poor for the rest of your life. Woo! -hoo! And I was like, I, I was like, and and I said, I mean, I don't think I fully was cognizant of it at the time. Um, uh, but I said, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. And he said, okay, second thing, you know that if you go into youth ministry, you'll be poor for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, and, then, and then my parents felt that, said that if they felt God was calling me to this, that they would help financially support me through college, which was really, really helpful and really, wow. really, uh, really kind of them. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, like a week later, I started in a Bible college with no real sense of... Um, uh, and just to be clear as well, you're still in college now, aren't you? So yeah, I mean, yeah. Parents have been just... <laughs> so, uh, good point. Supporting yeah, the just saying. <laughs> I've been I've been sending them tuition bills for reimbursement <laughs> for fake colleges for the last twenty years. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, so that's almost twenty years ago. That's nineteen years ago. Um, so most people, a lot of people, can go to university for certain things, right? Mm -hmm. They can they can go to university to study geography and end up being an accountant. Yeah. But you went to IBI, Irish Bible Institute. Is that what mm -hmm. it stands for? Yeah. And, yeah, then, yeah. and yeah. then and then you actually went into faith-based work, right? Yeah, went straight into youth ministry, working for a scripture union. Yeah. Wow. Um, so uh, yeah, well, I, and I actually had a my first two years in IBI, um, was well, my only two years in IBI was because they only had a diploma at the time but I really wanted to get a degree and, uh, but that wasn't available in Ireland at the time. So I actually had to go over to the UK and get, um, went to a college in Bournemouth that was accredited 
that um, IBI was accredited to, and I completed my bachelor's in applied theology and um, youth and community work from a secular perspective. So that was really helpful to actually have a qualification that was like um, a secular youth work qualification rather than just like, if you run the right youth group, everything will be fine. Um, or here, here is ministry, like as it, like sometimes I think youth ministry can taught, it can be taught as the only thing you need to do is do inductive Bible study well, rather right. than actually right. youth ministry is actually a much fuller, more holistic thing that we need to have um, uh, understanding of the kind of component pieces and how they impact on each other. So yeah, came back, started working for SU. You- how many years did you did you did you do youth ministry for? Um, from two thousand and four to to twenty twelve, so eight years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So in two different roles, and never in like a parish. Like it was always either SU, which was working around the country doing youth and schools work, or down in Kilkenny, looking after the southeast in particular. So be, being directly involved in youth work, but um with a particular emphasis on kind of um, training and, and um, creating pathways for other people to get involved with it. Yeah. Why did you move on from youth work? Um, a sense of uh, wanting to be able to engage with an older demographic uh, for who, who were able to hold, not that teenagers aren't able to do this, but not all teenagers are ready for it and not all Christian parents are ready for their kids to have to um, to be ministered to by a youth worker who is asking people to hold things in tension. Like so, um, uh, youth ministry um, can it's a great time for creating a foundation for people's faith. But what ends up happening is many of us actually, by the end of our time as a teenager, we need to deconstruct the oversimplified version of faith that we've inherited and be able to be honest with the questions that we have for ourselves. And I really wanted to work with young adults who were either deconstructing Christianity, the Christianity that they inherited, or hadn't found a safe place to ask the questions that were burning on their hearts. Um, all with a, all with a, um, a drive to help people recover and reconstruct a faith that was compelling to them rather than um, walking away from something that was too rigid for them to find a home. Well, and and that included like some writing and some. Yeah. That's the reason I wrote closer still is it was very much a, it was very much my journey about how I had um, uh, jettisoned the God who I had grown up with in order to uh, embrace the good gracious God that I feel is revealed in scripture. Um, and Christian culture doesn't always re- uh, reveal that. But um, I, uh, but as I went on that journey myself, I was having a different experience of God, uh, and I wanted to be able to share that with people and share a way of understanding their journey with Him that could be. Um, I mean, I felt more beautiful or compelling. It was kind of burning a hole in me, so I needed to get it out there. And it was around that time, actually. So it was, it was 2012. I think it was January 2012 that I did my first overseas speaking engagement um, to a university. Um, and so I, I was flown over to Northwest Nazarene University in Idaho, uh, where I spent five days speaking. Um, it's a long way from did, Bangladesh. <laughs> long way from Bangladesh. Pretty much as far as you can get while being in the same hemisphere. Um, I mean, well, yeah, the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the What was... I, that was a mad experience because we had like we had chapel which was compulsory on the mornings of that week and then I was speaking th- two evenings as part of their winter retreat and the students came to me on the Thursday after four days of teaching and said we feel like we still have somewhere to go here do you want us to organize an extra night tomorrow night for anyone who'd be interested and like 250 people showed up Wow. And so like, so the fact that people were opting into this conversation and I was doing the kind of content and closer still as I was figuring it out. Um, the, the response that I was getting was like, was really affirming of this idea that what you're talking about here is something that we need to hear. And that was the kind of beginning of my journey into really knowing that I had to finish the book and really, and then leaving my work in order to go and, um, uh, spend more time, uh, uh, kind of speaking to university students. Um, I thought that was going to turn into a f- long-term career of me, like, you know, traveling around and staying in five-star hotels and, you know, speaking to Ooh. millions of people. Um, and, uh, hey, uh, you know, that, and that's why I got into it. Um, uh, finally you, trying to tell my dad, um, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> you can you, make money doing this. But you came back and actually then got involved in, or, in chaplaincy. Yeah. And then so uh, a few years, uh, about 
three and a half years after writing Closer Still. I uh, and spending about three, I was spending anywhere from three to seven months a year on the road speaking in the US, Canada uh, in particular. Um, at the end of that, uh, I felt God calling me to serve in a, in a local community um, uh, that I wasn't, that I wasn't, that there was the part of me that was driven to being on the road and standing up in front of big groups of people. Um, I had had a taste of that and I knew how intoxicating and wonderful that could be for the right reasons and the wrong reasons. And then as I was praying through it, I felt God calling me to commit myself to something local and to give myself to one group of people. And so I, uh, started, uh, so the opportunity came up in UCD and it felt like the right, um, the right call for me. So, and, and uh, now, I mean, now you're on another stage of your journey. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm focusing even more on one locality. So the idea of one day having a part like of I'm training towards ministering in one parish to um to embodying myself fully in the life of one group of people journeying together. Um and yeah, that's absolutely terrifying. Um but it's Why? uh um I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> pick me, pick me. <laughs> um one of the nice things about uh, being on the road was you could, you stand up, you do your bit. You might do some follow-up stuff afterwards. Like I used to organize like, coffees in local coffee shops where like students who were interested in what I'd said in chapel could come and meet me and we'd like hang out and chat about like the big questions in life and stuff like that. We'd have a great time doing that. But then whenever you wanted to, you could just like close the door and be like, yeah, peace. The Amen. Next Amen. Sorry guys, I'd love to say, but I got to catch a flight. <laughs> um you know um but in you know in a parish or in one community when somebody says hey listen can you i'm like i'm sorry i've got oh I, yeah i don't have anywhere to go god's <laughs> called me to stay here um <laughs> and, and i'm and i'm not gonna you're not an audience member like you know you didn't come to hear me speak you came uh to the church that you've always come to and to a certain extent i'm the new one here mm. um i'm the one who is the, the the visitor um and uh and i've been invited to faithfulness in this place um with one group um and so is that really scares me because that um it, it's it's going to be a real challenge but i also love the idea of it i love the um but i know that it's going to be really hard so I was going to ask God, like for, for you, for your journey, how has your interaction been with, with um, family and friends as they've mm -hmm. seen you evolve and move from stage to stage? Like, how's that been? Uh, like, I mean, your family rock solid. Like they've, they've always been um, uh, super supportive of what I've, uh, of what I've felt God is calling me into. So uh, one of my favorite memories is always, uh, is getting on a plane to go on one of those trips, like where I'd be gone for 12 or 14 weeks at a time. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I would get onto the plane and find in my bag, a dad, a, a, a letter from a my dad. dad. <laughs> my dad had smuggled himself into my bag <clears throat> dad used to write me letters um and it would just say on the envelope it would just say to scott and then in brackets not to be opened until airborne Aww. and uh and it was you i would open up this letter and it was always him talking about how proud he was of me and how much he believed in what i was doing how much mm. he felt that i was i was following me God, where he had called me uh, and that kind of support is so incredibly energizing um, mm. so uh, and then of course the, like the other side of it is that you know the, your family are also the ones who rip it out of you so like whenever i thought, felt i was getting a bit big for my boots or like yeah. kind of like in a, you know family are brilliant at bringing you back down to earth and reminding you that you know you know they knew they've got the pictures of your bad haircuts and they're willing to share them uh, and there's also <laughs> character equivalents of that um yeah uh friends is friends is funny i find actually what's happened with friends is that um people will always find a reason to uh be with you or not with you so there are some friends for whom they just felt I was taking this whole faith thing too seriously. And those were Christians. Um, and, uh, we want names. And so, and so it's, it, it's, it's, no, no, Greg, we do not, we do not want names, Greg. <laughs> it, it's almost like, like if you, you know, when you get into it, like, um, you know, the, if, 
you get passionate about it. And you're like, I'm thinking about doing this. And they're like, well, and then they're, you know, they're like, actually, I think I'm going to walk away from this. And they're like, well, you know, like, and it's almost like, <laughs> like if you lived your life trying to make your friends happy about what you're doing with your faith, you're in, you're in for, you're in for bad news. Um, uh, at least in my experience, um, uh, everyone kind of simultaneously felt I was being not committed enough and too committed at the same time. And that's, um, the, there's no upside to trying to live by that, that by those voices. So, um, that's something I've, I think, I think most of my friends who are closest to me are people who understand what this call means and have mm. and have answered it because they are um they know what it's like to feel something undeniable and to and to have to walk into it no matter what those sacrifices entail um and i don't know if if others of my friends have always uh, understood that some of them have i guess i'm just thinking of certain experiences yeah like what <clears throat> no i'm joking <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> Oh, he knew he went for it. I know he did. <laughs> he, was on, he was on the edge. He was oh. so, will I, will I? Yeah, I wasn't yeah. going to talk about individuals, but what I was, I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. N name, names. Um, uh, th sometimes I had f middle class Christian friends who were kind of like, were almost like, oh, I mean, if you commit yourself to this, I'm probably going to have to ask some questions of myself. You know? <laughs> um, like, uh, uh, like. Uh, like it isn't come on isn't just going to church enough i was like well like not for me not with the sense yeah. of calling that i have and um and it was funny sometimes i found when i had moments where i had non-christian friends who would show up at my book launches and buy and read my books because they were like i love you and i support you and i don't believe in any of the stuff you talk about but i believe in you yeah and then i have other friends for whom they're like um oh is that today oh. um uh, and and there were people who were journeying with me faith wise and that 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 hurt and it, it uh, and i think i carried around that around for a while um and it's definitely sad looking back on on how how that period of life felt yeah mm. this is mm. the time to forgive al <laughs> i'm not Never. done yet, so <laughs> I'm not done. I mean, my name is Maximus, or and I will have my vengeance. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm no emperor. What are you talking about? <laughs> what about Al? <laughs> no, but what about you, Al? What did it all begin for you? Um, well, I, one, and I, th I think I've shared this story before. I like one very clear memory for me was when I was 15. Um, and so when I was younger, my mom had been had been sick and and in and out of hospitals and, and all sorts of different things going on. And there was a, a youth leader in church and he had asked if I want, he had just got this kite. He goes, Hey, I'm thinking about going to the beach. Do you want to go and fly this kite? And I have no recollection of conversation. I have no recollection of, um, you know, even the, 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 uh, the, the car journey there or back or how we even got there. I'm, I'm assuming he picked me up. All I remember is being on that cold beach where it was very windy, Dolly Mount Strand, north side. Um, and I had never felt so like listened to, even though there was no conversation. Um, and, and the leader, as, as we, just, we just flew this, and it was a case of he was showing and taking interest just in, in me. So he wasn't asking how my mom was doing, how my dad was doing, how the family, how school. It was just... Do you want to do this? Here we go. And it was, it was great. And he was a, he was a youth leader? I remember, leader. yeah, he was a youth leader in the church. So he had done, oh, no, he'd no, been involved, no. Paul Rothwell. Um, and, you know, he, he had been a, a phenomenal influence. Just uh, he, it, There was a youth group that was on in the church that would have met very sporadically. And I would have gone along to that. And I just remember going, ah, that's, I'd love to do that. Mm. That's what I would love to do with my life is just to actually connect and to, for, for a teenager to feel safe or good mm -hmm. or connected or listened so at to. A, at age 15, you thought that? Yeah, yeah, 15. Mm -hmm. 15 you, you, and you, connect, I, you connected your emotional feelings with wanting to spend your life doing that for other ones, for other teenagers. Yeah. Wow. My emotional intelligence is so high. Or um, it, was so high who, at <laughs> it was high at 15 and it's never gone beyond it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean, it's, I was going to say, it does I'm, raise the question I'm, as to what happened. Yeah, I, I'm leveling out. <laughs> no, like, I think, I think, like, at fit, I think because of all life circumstance that was going on um, in, in all sorts of different areas, for, for me, growing up, church is actually quite important. Like, that, that, that friendship connection. 
um, and, and the interactions that, that were there. And I've done different camps and stuff. Uh, and I look back and, <laughs> I mean, we, we can dissect all sorts of different things that were horrendous and awful. And yeah. I, 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 will, <laughs> I will still say... Names. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still say that I'm so thrilled for those experiences. Mm -hmm. because of the shaping that it gave me in, in what is good and also then seeing what is, what is bad and, and, and how do we either apologize for that or, or make amends in, in different ways. But I, I'd say at 15, for, for me, it was, it was very clear, um, mm -hmm. you know, of the, I, I think that this is what I want to do. And I don't know whether I would say it was at that stage or God is definitely saying you should go in, but it was me going, this is what I'd love to do. And I would say mm. from there then, when I was in school, um, like, like God, it was always a known thing that God was important to me. So my friends in school, I would have gotten it ripped out of me because of my faith. And there were moments, there's nuggets, and it was not like this every, every day, but there were nuggets where I remember one particular time at a lunch break, a conversation happening and talking about just the love of God. How, within the the dining area there was at least 80 85 other you know students who were standing around listening quietly to this to this conversation that was going on where one person was being so aggressive mm -hmm. and just sitting there and listening and saying i'm so sorry that that's been your experience and, and just having this and, and people just and then throwing in a question or no listen to him you know and, and just it being nuts now it was not like that every lunchtime but that was a moment again thank god oh can you imagine but i it, that was i was going to get used to this i'm i'm definitely changing my uh, <laughs> my restaurant uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm leaving this school um when's this guy out of here but i i think like for me that, that those interactions as mm -hmm. as unique and weird as they were at the time it was for me friends was always important and actually most of my friends that i had in school th there was always different crossovers that they would have even with friends from church or from from youth group um, and then there were friends that were just so separate but i would never have had uh, oh no i hope these guys never meet because mm. i knew i was constant so who i was in school it was exactly the same as who i was in in church so the, you know whether that be with the, the the joking around or the conversations or the things I liked, it wasn't like you know in school someone would say you like Amy Grant. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, totally. You know, whereas in church you're like, yeah, who doesn't like Amy Grant? I'm like, <laughs> so it was sounds like a correction. I'm in love with Amy. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the dream. Yeah, and I, so I think for for me the integrity of being the same person in in everywhere was 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 really key and important. Why? Because it was, it was the one, I suppose. No, I'm not, quite, was, I'm not questioning as a joke, Scott. I'm actually, <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was funny. I, that's a wonderful interviewer's question that says, I want to explore why Alan values integrity so much, but how it can come across if you're a half listener, which is all I ever do with Alan. It, is, but yeah, but why would that be important? So why would integrity important be important? Is that yeah. no, but, like, but like, again, you're, you're a teenager. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you having these conversations? I mean, what brought you to the place where you're having these conversations about integrity being important in every area? I think because it was being true. I mean, and I, I think I think in kind of like, and again, looking at I my mean, own. I, I, I don't understand that. What does that mean? Being true. I think because of all the different things I saw, like for me, a life verse has been John 10, 10. The thief has come to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come that you may have life, have it to the full. And the, the, that, that's a paradox. There's a real wrestle in that. And so defining then what has been stolen, killed or destroyed, is this God because this is God's plan and you just got to suck it up and deal with it? Or no, that's a lie. That's not true. Jesus came to give me a full life. So what does that look like even in the crap surroundings that we might find ourselves? So and at so, age 15, you're having this conversation with yourself? Yeah. With that verse? Yeah, oh yeah, well, very much so, wow. very very much so. Wow. With, uh, and uh, because I think uh, again, for me, the import. Now I can whittle it down and make it funny. In that, when I was four, the very first movie I ever saw was Superman, and I, 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 I yeah, stop. And and and, and, and <laughs> no, go ahead, yeah. Scott. It's important. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, keep keep going. No, but I, I so I, for for me, the but it was idea a Christopher Reeves Spider Superman, right? 
well, you nearly said Spider Man. Don't I did. do that. But it was Christopher yeah, Reeves, it, it, though. It was, yeah, seventy eight. So, like, what can you learn oh. from that? Like, for for me, the idea of um, th- there's a line in the in the movie where he says he he stands for truth and justice, you know, and Lois Lane is <laughs> good luck with that, and he, he's like Lois, I never lie, and there's this like he's actually serious. And the idea that something can be so good that is not uh, spoiled by surroundings. I've, I've loved that ever since I was a kid. And then actually seeing that in Jesus, in how no matter what he was surrounded by, never spoiled by his surroundings. Um, and I think so, as a teen, sorry. Go ahead. Well, just, I, I think as a teen, with the surroundings that I had, with some of the crap and the junk that was going on, there was something more than just that and actually trying to find the good even in the junk but saying it, it does not have to be warped because of because of surroundings um, so did you immediately then i go, think with, with that did, as well did you immediately then go into youth work like was that literally secondary school into, yeah, into well, or well when i was in secondary school the 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 the, the, the dream was i was going to do my leaving cert i i'd seen a bible college over in scotland that i was going to go to and from that then get into youth ministry um and i failed my leaving cert so that all then <laughs> went out the window so so integrity <laughs> meant nothing that is then in... <laughs> relevant at this time of year as well i love i know i know this. Yeah, yeah. yeah um and so fail the leaving cert and like all of a sudden like oh well i can't do this i i can't and like i was I, fun fascinating journey of, of like when i was in school i was the head boy in school which was very novel and very bizarre like to be <laughs> head boy i got i got i'm convinced still to this day it was done as a as a as a piss take in that <laughs> oh well we'll get alan to be the head boy because seriously um but i i then had to repeat my leaving search back in the same school where i was head boy so i went back in to the same place did you after, need to be head boy I mean, again yeah, I asked if I have to be here again. <laughs> the guy's prom king's back. Is prom king ever going to graduate? Uh, I've re- dusting I've off the old pin. Seventeen times. Dusting off the old pin. <laughs> still here, guys. Up. Still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I think that I mean, like it, I, it was brilliant. I mean, because for, for me, in looking back, as much as I hated it. I remember at the time kind of going, I have nothing to prove otherwise that I just need to get this leaving. But all the plans of going, that was, that was gone. Um, mm-hmm. And so I went from there, you guys know, and ripped in enough. It went and it worked in Supermax, you know, and, and ended up kind of doing, mm-hmm. actually, I really, I enjoyed that. But the dream was still to get into youth ministry. And then Trevor Morrow uh, in Luke and I was doing a camp out there. And he had said, listen, would you be interested in coming here? And I think even when, so when I was in, I so grew this up is, in an, you, you had no university, you had no, nope. no, this is like secondary school. Presbyter- secondary school. Presbyterian I'd gone, I, yeah, I'd, I'd gone into uh, working in Supermax and, and, and one or two other different restaurants. Did a so you, were literally, you were literally convinced from a very young age that this is what you were going to do. Yeah. hundred wow. percent. Wow. Um, I mean, not enough so, to get, try and get a good leaving. <laughs> It's not about the leaving cert, Scott. It's not about the leaving cert. But as as every student this year is going to realize, yeah, and yeah. it's 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 it, it was the 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 thing of kind of going. And I never like it wasn't like I planned out. And this is where I'm going to go. And this is where it's going to be. And what it's going to look like. Mm-hmm. And I think w- w- growing up in a non-denominational church, like there was there weren't these at the time. I didn't see the shackles. But there weren't boundaries, you know, because we were a free church. You know, oh, we're free. We love and, and blah, blah. The shackles I are looked, free. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> no, I can look back. It, it only costs, <laughs> it only costs re- to take them back on. Yeah, it does. That's, <laughs> mm. um, and I, I think Why'd it, you it clap? Was, no, that's the Because it's true, unfortunately. Oh, I he, he, was, no. he was clapping like applause, but ah. our muscle yeah. memory says, inappropriate. Yeah, yeah no, 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 that was good, good clap, good clap. Yeah. Um, but Did I, you I not think, wonder why they sing Mary Mary Shackles every Sunday? <laughs> yeah, no, that was before my time. <laughs> or after, that Never was after my that. time. Exactly. No, because yeah. it was still illegal to dance in Christian circles at the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a flag, you were okay. Oh. Um, but so, so, yeah, so, so we, we, we had like, I mean, I was in this non-denominational and then this, this, this uh, post came up in, in Luke and Presby. And I remember a conversation 
you know, with, 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 with my family kind of going, now, y- you know that it's, it's going to be a different type of church and one. And there, there, was, there was support, but it was a, a semi-reserved support because I don't know how you're going to adapt. It's, it's not going to be the same as what you've been used to in, in, the, in the style of church and the way they do different things and whatnot. And so it was, I mean, looking back, I would say it was a reserved support as to what was going on. And my friends are like, yeah, cool, whatever. Like, what else would you be doing? So Um, where did the drive come to continually pursue things, even in the midst of family and friends kind of wondering, is this the right thing? Is he going the right direction? Like, I mean, looking at the whole beautiful rainbow, like, I mean, from Catholic background, uh, worked in a Presbyterian, worked in a Brethren slash Evangelical, and then from there into uh, Church of Orange. So it's it's been a great mix, of, a phenomenal rainbow of color. Um, so and I, what, what is what is? But I'm curious to what, what what's kept you consistently uh, on that pursuit of, of 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 walking alongside that person on the beach. What is consi- what has kept you consistently in the pocket there? I told you, man, 1978, Superman. I mean, like, you mock it, but it's so true. <laughs> I'm not. No, I, I know. I, I think, I think. Uh, if he's not, I am. For me, <laughs> stop. For, for me, the consistency of, of, of what that love and that truth is together, you know, and actually being, like, so the idea of being denominational, it's still, it, I, it, it's a wrestle I still have. I, I mean, when I was in, Luke and Presby, someone said to me, so you're Presbyterian? I go, no, I'm, I'm Christian. Um, and when I went to, to DEC, it, it wasn't as much of an issue because it was deemed and seen as a free church, even though it was brethren and it, with that evangelical tendency. Uh, and then going to, uh, uh, to Red Cross, Dungenstown, w- where it was uh, uh, Anglican. It was, oh, so, now, so now you're Church of Ireland. I'm like, yeah, still Christian. You know, because for me, it's still been this thing of like, no, the relationship with God is not bound by a denomination. It's not bound by this particular box that people need to have in set ways. And like, I mean, like Scott, I would say there's been definite times where God has has very clearly spoken. And there's been the consistency as well of seeing and that time of saying it's not like I would say God is very much and this is why I'm gonna go you're gonna go through all of this because it's going to lead to here. It was very much a case of this is the journey that I'm on that I know God is present with me. And it's like, what are we gonna do today? You know, what what's this gonna look like? You know, and I I think for me, church has always been so important because like, I believe it, it, is, it is what people need, not necessarily how people do church or the reputation that church has got in the negative and rightly so in the negative because it has failed its, in its calling. Um, but actually going back to what it is to journey with God in a desert following this pillar of fire or, or cloud and, you know, hey, listen, I want to have a relationship with you guys. No, 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 just give us laws. Uh, we'll be happy with that. And God, uh, well, no, I really want to. No, just just write down what you want us to do. And that's, and so looking for that consistency of God being faithful, even though I sh- shift and, and change my, my view and my concept. So like I, I still go back to, you know, and when I think about it, the kite, it was a red and a blue kite and as as it flew within the wind as to how all that went i i loved seeing actually the and when i go back it's not that i'm on a cold beach but it's very much a warm space um because i feel very much there was a connection that was that was there uh which for me like is 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 what i want to bring within ministry for people to have that connection with god and as they have that connection with god they have that connection with people around them um if not even that understanding and so and that that's important i mean like i look like all the different areas that was back in 92 93 i think whenever i first started working in um in uh lucan and so it's been this journey of never thinking. And when I was doing youth ministry, it was never like, this is a great stepping stone to get into ordained mm. ministry. Never. <laughs> Trevor, when I was uh, in, in uh, Luke and Presby, after my, first, after my second year, he goes, you need to think about going to Union Theological 
uh, you'd make a great Presbyterian minister. And I, I, that's the only thing I think I would say he's ever said I was wrong. And he would look back now and he would say it would have been wrong. But when I when I when I let him know that actually I'd been accepted for ordained uh, ministry training within the C of I, he had said, that's the perfect church. This is great for you. This is good. And he's always been that sort of... Knowing you theologically, I don't think being a Presbyterian minister was ever really going to be much of a fit for you. Oh, oh, sweet mercy, no. But I think that, <laughs> for, me it's, it's, for me, it's interesting, though, because like, it's obviously that you're... It seems that your desire to model consistency and in faith communities is what's been that that has been the consistent throughout your whole life yeah. from yeah. whatever from superman through age 15 but just being that being something steady and true as you would say you know in the midst of all that but that and, and knowing you integrity is very important too so i mean so that would be that kind of the core driver for you would it yeah like i i think it, it's taking <laughs> to say it's taking god for his word I know that that can be so misunderstood because people try to interpret what God is saying. But I think, I think there, there is that, well, what it is to actually take God for his word and to sit and to wrestle and to listen and to let those words soak in for me then to go, yeah, th this is what this means in my life now. And I know God's, God's leading. I know, I know the voice that, that brings that consistency. But, um, modeling, but modeling it. Obviously, and creating and space for other people to experience it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and very much like we, we had a Bible study there just the other night with, with a couple of different people at the church. And there were some serious questions being asked that not knowing if I was to answer some of these questions in a Zoom Bible study isn't going to cut it. It's not going to work because someone's going to go away going, uh, are you saying? And, and, and someone actually said, listen, I, I want to apologize. I think I, I took you up wrong. And I didn't, I didn't uh, correct their apology because they didn't take me up wrong, but it was too much of a leap for where, and I kind of thought this is not the time for that leap to happen. And that's okay. And so it's like what I've said and what I've realized even with my fixing and reorganizing my books and stuff, I'm coming across books that I now would be venomously against, but I love having them on my shelf because it reminds me, I read this and at a particular time in my life, this was a real help and, and an encouragement and a challenge and part of my process, part of my journey. And you I finally think... found uh, Jerry Bridges' uh, book, Where Is God When Life Hurts Again? Uh, no, that was Yancey. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think, I think like with, with all the different things and kind of going through, I know there are some people when they realize, Oh, I don't believe this stuff anymore. So I'm getting rid of it because I can't have it. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of, so there's, there's areas where I kind of go, don't do that because you're, you're leaving or you're trying to forget stuff that was very much part of your past. And I think that's important. Even the crap I think is, is important. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I agree. I think that same time, you know, burning the, the love letters of an old girlfriend can sometimes be cathartic and important too, do you yes. know? And, yes. uh, Philip Rather Yancey, than treasuring them and keeping them in your bed. So okay, well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Philip Yancey is my girlfriend, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you might want to burn those ones, but uh, uh, funny. I, mean, I can understand both things. You, you know, it's good. To yeah. Learn. No, I, I'm not, I'm not saying people who do it, that that's fine. But for me, like for, for me, it's actually been important to actually hold on to this stuff because it's a, it's, it's, it's a memory of attention that has always been there. Because I'm going, is this it? I, I, yeah. Have we arrived and now? So, oh, and so like, we're actually well over time at this point. So, I mean, you two boys know, God. You, you two boys know how to talk. <laughs> Do people never ask you questions? Is that the problem? <laughs> and bother listening to answers? But like, I would, I'd be curious to, to like to wrap it up by asking if either one of you have any regrets in, in how it unfolded over the last few years or the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. Man three. Huh? I, I think, I think I say we, do, <laughs> I say we, re, we save, we should save regrets for our next show and do and interview Greg at the beginning of our next show and then talk about, okay, let's do the regrets and we could do because it. I'm going to be, all, two. I'm going to be the regrets. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you just, I regret knowing no, Greg. Your, your, yours is a story of God's regrets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
I'll take that. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's just bleak. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's just, it's hard not to get a little hyped up here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> keep hyping, it, hyping each other up. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, because I think that's, I, I think that's a, I think that's a great conversation about um, even the nature of regret. Yeah, because I think there's different ways in which we can regret in healthy and unhealthy ways. Yes. So, um, uh, so maybe we keep that for our next one, um, oh, and and right. we put Greg on center stage, hit that spotlight on him. He's been itching. No, I, I, I'm not going to turn up. The Greg Yard shift. The Greg Yard, nice. <laughs> awesome guys. Thanks. Good boys. Talk to you next week. Before Talk to you. Bye guys. Peace. At the time, I didn't see the shackles, but uh, there weren't boundaries, you know, because we were a free church. You know, oh, we're free, we love, and blah, blah. The shackles I are looked, free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, no, I can look it, it, it only costs, <laughs> it only costs to take them back off. Yeah, it does. That's... <laughs> mm.